Hello, I'm Tim Smith, the pastor of the Fayetteville Cumberland Presbyterian Church located in Fayetteville, Tennessee. And we're delighted to have you with us today, whether you're watching on Fayetteville Public Utilities Channel 6 or our church YouTube channel. If you don't have a church home, we'd love to have you come and be with us and worship on Sundays. We have our 1030 a.m. worship service in the sanctuary. That's usually where I record these. Today, I'm speaking to you from our fellowship hall. That's where we have our 8.30 a.m. worship service. It's a little bit more casual dress, a little bit more contemporary music. Uh, but either of those services, we would love to have you come and be with us. Today, as we prepare to worship our Lord Jesus Christ, we trust that his Holy Spirit will lead our hearts and minds in this time of worship. And may he be glorified by all that takes place. Today I'm going to be speaking on the subject of faith, and I know you say, well, I've heard a hundred sermons on faith, I've heard all kinds of talk on faith, but in the end, faith is what it is all about. After all, as Christians, we are called people of faith, the Bible is a book of faith, and it is all about our belief in things we have not seen, but yet we believe them. At the very heart of it is our faith in God, that God exists, and that God is a God of love and grace, an eternal God of all power and might. Also at the heart of it is our belief in Jesus Christ, his Son, our risen Lord and Savior. It is faith on those principles that everything else in the Christian community and in the Christian belief system is built. But the key is faith. And faith can be very challenging, can it? Especially in times of trouble or distress, but not only then, on other occasions. There's always that struggle within us human beings between faith and belief on the one hand and doubt on the other. In the end, we have to either believe or not believe. We can't just have a little bit of faith. We either have faith or we don't have it. It's like if we're going to cross a bridge. You've seen those swinging bridges before that go back and forth that are suspended above the uh, canyon. If we're going to walk across one of those, we have to either believe that it will support us and walk across it, or if we do not believe it will support us, we don't get on it, do we? We never cross. We stay on that one side. The difference in the person that goes across and the person that doesn't is their faith. And for us as Christians, the difference between us and the non-Christians is either our belief or our unbelief when it comes to Jesus. Today I'm going to be reading from Mark's Gospel, chapter 6, beginning in verse 1, and it is part of the story of when Jesus returned to his hometown in Nazareth. Jesus left the place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all of this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, prophets are with honor except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed by their unbelief. Jesus says a prophet is honored everywhere except amongst those in his hometown or in his family. We see here that Jesus returns to his hometown in Nazareth. There he no doubt sees family and sees old time friends and acquaintances. But we read something here about Jesus that we don't hear of at any other time. 
we're told that he is unable to perform his miracles. Now think about that for a moment. This is the Jesus that raises people from the dead, that feeds the multitudes and the large crowds. This is the Jesus that is able to allow the blind to see and the lame to walk. Yet here in Nazareth, he is unable to perform these miracles. And so we wonder, of course, why is this? Why can he not do it? Is it because something in the geographical features of Nazareth or something about he can't be but so far away from the temple or Jerusalem or something? No, that's not it. There's no uh, mention of that. Is it that Jesus does not have the power or the ability to do the miracles any longer? No, that's not the case either. The problem is the people in the crowd. The problem is the lack of faith, the lack of belief in those that have gathered there. To them, Jesus is not the Son of God, nor the Messiah, nor the Savior. He is the son of Mary and Joseph. He's the little boy that they saw grow up in their midst. He's not this famed prophet or teacher. He's someone they went to school with or used to play with on the playground. And they do not give him the respect, nor do they have the faith in his power or ability, and so the miracles cannot be performed. Jesus had a hard task before him to return to his hometown. There's that old saying, and I found it to be pretty true, you get smarter the further you get away from home. It seems like once we get away where people don't know us all so well, they begin to think we're a lot smarter than those people that have spent time with us and know our weaknesses, our flaws, and maybe can remember some mistakes we made or some foolish thing that we did in the past. They, we can see here that they looked back at Jesus as one of them. They knew they did not have the power to perform great miracles, and so certainly Jesus would not either. It's always been said that preachers have a very difficult time when they begin to preach and pastor in their home community and areas. I know I am very blessed to be pastoring here in my own home community growing up here, uh, knowing so many of you all through the years and through most of my life. I have been very blessed that people have been very understanding and accepting of me in spite of my human weaknesses and flaws. I know that is not always the case, and too many of my pastor friends have struggled in this same area, and in some cases, it has led to a failed pastorate. We're thankful that's not the case here, or at least I'm thankful that's not the case. But as we think about this, we can only imagine that these people were greatly suspicious of this man, Jesus. He was the person that they knew. He was the person they had spent time with. And they did not believe him to be able to perform these great deeds and these great miracles. Jesus returns here and he is unable to heal but only a few people. And the reason for this is the great unbelief that was in the crowd. And it is here we come to one of the great truths of Christianity and of the things of God. And that is this, Jesus cannot change the life of the person with no faith. It's a very interesting thing, isn't it? We believe as Christians that Jesus is our Savior and able to change our lives and transform us into those new creations that the Word tells us of. But in order for that to happen, we must believe. We must have faith. For those in the crowd that day, Jesus could not heal them because they had no faith. For the people today in our midst, maybe even you and I, we cannot be transformed by Jesus if we do not believe. We could not do all that God wants us to do unless we believe. Belief is the key. We have to have it. Or without it, we will surely fail. We know that 
faith is essential, but we know that there are many skeptics in the world today, and there are those that are very skeptical of the idea of Jesus, the idea of God. I know there are people maybe watching today, or I'm sure that you know, and don't believe in God. Don't believe there is a higher power. There may well be those watching today that do not believe that Jesus was any more than a prophet, or maybe some that even questioned whether he existed at all. But for those of us that have experienced God, that have experienced the life-changing power of Jesus Christ and been transformed, nobody, no matter what they tell us, can dissuade us of our convictions on that because we have experienced Jesus and we know what we have felt and what we have seen and what has taken place. There were many skeptics in Jesus' day. There in Nazareth, there were many skeptics. And there are skeptics still with us today. For them, they look around and they do not see God at work in the world. Whereas, when I look around the world, I see God at work. When I see a beautiful sunrise, when I see a thunderstorm, when I see the stars of the night, I see the great power of God. We also see other times in which we believe God is at work, don't we? Those times when maybe our prayers are answered times when God intervenes, the times when healing is brought upon a body, all of these actions are times in which God is at work. However, for those that are skeptical, they may instead not see it as a sign that God is at work, but instead they may see it as something else. They may see it as a coincidence or just a random act or it just happened to end that way. They may see that was someone using their own personal power or their personal knowledge or wisdom, such as in a doctor bringing healing or upon a particular medication that was used. And they fail to realize that God is the giver of all wisdom and knowledge and strength. And that if it is God's will that something will be done, it will be done. And if it is not, it shall not be done. But that God is able to empower us to do great and mighty things. But too many times we lack the faith that is needed, don't we? We struggle to have it. Here in this story, we're told that Jesus was amazed by their unbelief. There are some times in Scripture where we read that Jesus is amazed by someone's faith. But here he is amazed by their lack of faith. As Jesus looks down on this world in the 21st century, he must surely be amazed at the lack of faith of the human community. But I wonder what he thinks about our faith, your faith, my faith, the faith of our church. What type of faith do we have? Is it faith as to move mountains? If Jesus were to arrive today, could he perform miracles here in Fayetteville? Or would the lack of faith, the lack of belief, be so vast that he would be unable to perform his work? See, the key is we have to believe. To be saved, we are saved through faith. To go to heaven, we have to have faith. To be made that new creation, we have to believe. And without that belief, we fail. We fall short. I wonder today what type of faith we had. If our faith was weighed on a scale, would it be measured in pounds or ounces? Do we have the faith needed to truly serve our Lord? I trust that we do. Let us pray. Gracious God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to be together today. We pray, Lord, that these words will be empowered by your Holy Spirit and speak to each person's life. Give us faith in our moments of weakness. Give us faith to believe past the times of doubt. Give us strength to believe even when others may dissuade us and discourage us. Forgive us of our sins, Lord, and draw us ever closer to you always. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
Again, I'm Tim Smith, pastor of the Fayetteville Cumberland Presbyterian Church here in Fayetteville, Tennessee. And if you don't have a church home, we'd love for you to come and worship with us. We're located at 1015 Lewisburg Highway. We have our 8.30 a.m. service here in the Fellowship Hall and our 10.30 a.m. service in the sanctuary. May God bless each and every one of you.